bring down most of them things there to, to size. Right, good. Right, good. Now, now, hear this. You hear this. Gotta go to a break, though. We gotta go to a break big time. But hurry up. Yeah, when I was a kid coming up, they give me when I got bronchitis or when we get school or something like that. My grandma used to give us brown sugar with that two drops of cava. We can't. I started, but we can't, <laughs> but we can't, I can't continue this question right now because of time. So make a point quick for me, big time. And see my vaccination card, yeah? It looks just like this, eh? This is this a no, laminated no, no. version, a uh, condensed laminated no, no, no. version, but it, it work holding on my wallet. You need to update that I'm now with the yeah, booster. I'm to make a <laughs> yeah, I need to put my booster, but I'm, I'm not do, I do yet. Yeah, I do bust about today, until tomorrow. Uh -huh, go ahead. Have a nice day. You have a nice day too, sir. Because really, we nice. can't go into a COVID discussion. Take your vaccination and, and, and prevent yourself. <laughs> You're going to break, Chief? <laughs> that would be the easiest advice I could give. Yeah, let's take the break. Troy, it's long overdue. It's already five minutes past seven. We'll be right back.
the Ministry of Finance. That was an embarrassing time for me because we could not pay the attorney. And when requested from the Ministry of Finance, it was a long process. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, that attorney only recently got uh, compensated for, for all that time, you know? So the structure needs to be amended. Mm -hmm. But as it relates to the audit office, our role and responsibility <coughs> is to examine. To do that, you must have the resources and you must be independent of. So, in it, a sense... Explain a little bit how you go about, um, because the, the fundamental issue here is that you want to make sure that whatever funds government utilizes in its, in its uh, operation, that what it is in accordance with something. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's following some sort of legal protocol. Mm -hmm. um, explain to us a little bit what it is you, you look for and how you go about selecting and dealing with ministries, auditing ministries. And so kind of get people a feel for mm -hmm. what you would do in, a, in, in your day-to-day -day activity and how you plan your structure mm -hmm. going forward. The process for us, it starts with the budget. Okay. budget so it's mm -hmm. extremely important for mm -hmm. people to understand the budget process. And it doesn't mean understanding from within the public service. Mm -hmm. I mean external to the public service. So that when questions asked, they are relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, they have meaning and, and people will know. Because when you ask questions or make statements sometimes and you don't have the basis to make them, people know that you don't know. So the important thing is, and from my office, we advocate for that. Citizen participation is important. So we look at the budget. Now remember, the budget passes through a process and on completion, it becomes law. Mm -hmm. it, is an appro it comes back as an appropriation. It, it is law. So, for example, the budget is structured in such a way that you have an, a line item for salaries, you can't pay nothing else out of that line Except but salaries. salaries. You should not. Mm -hmm. You should not. You should well, not. that's the operative. You should not. <laughs> <laughs> so based on that structure, then we would take a risk approach because we don't have the kind of resource to say we will examine everything. And really and truly, from an um, external standpoint, we should be selecting what we would be doing based on assurance from the internal audit section of the government. But I wouldn't say none exists anymore because since uh, maybe two months ago, I, an office was established. Uh. Mm -hmm. So there is no an office, but still it doesn't have the, uh, the, the proper resourcing to even start. So is there somebody heading that office? Or? They, they already have somebody heading the office. Okay. So the kind of assurance that should be provided to us, it's not there, right? So what we have to do, then we take a risk approach. We look at ministries, um, depending on the nature of what they're doing. So health, for example, education. Those people would feel that audit is always on their case, but it's simply because of the kind of money is being spent uh -huh. and the different areas. And then when you say you're going into education or health, one may think that, oh, the hold of health or education is being audited. Uh -huh. It doesn't work that way. Oh, it's just you have to certain. select an area, okay. yes, and then develop your objective and then, you know, develop a plan how you will go about it. Because you don't have the resources to just yeah. go in and do a full... Yes, life. that would oh. take forever. Oh. Yeah. There, is, there, there is always this feeling that, um, or the antagonistic component that the Auditor General is against the government, kind of, that, that kind of feeling is there. We saw it, especially with the last administration, there was a lot of back and forth, especially as it relates to things like the immigration department, the lands department. Uh -huh. um, I think they had you um, testifying several times. Yes, right? yes uh -huh. it, it, indeed. Uh -huh. So w is there a way to sensitize the general public service that the Auditor General is a necessary process? Same as in our private sector, your external <laughs> auditor becomes... <laughs> Uh, a part audited? of the, the, the so process to justify on. what you're doing and to be able to point out if there is any irregularities or any deviation away and then to put corrective measures in place. Is there a way that that, that process can be enhanced? It has to be done over time. Um, but the truth is that when a new entrants, for example, enter the public service, you have extensive training. They take a 
for a second class um, exam and then you uh -huh. do the first class and in those processes you are being trained exactly what to do, how to do and what to expect. Uh, but there has been a, a serious breakdown <coughs> over time within the public service. And so people don't, are not held accountable. Uh -huh. And that is a serious problem. So, so much so that it reaches a stage now where you can't necessarily or simply discipline or talk to a public officer because they take it personal. Mm -hmm. And then they go to their ministers. And then the challenge starts. So uh -huh. it starts with advocacy. And I, f I feel that the external party to government, which is the private sector, can play a big role. Because with constant um, dialogue and, and talking and, and using these different mediums to, to get the message across, then, you know, but people must be held accountable. Your, your <coughs> one of your primary um, obstacle seemed to be lack of getting the data that you needed to examine. Oftentimes when you look at cursory glance at your report, oftentimes there are some missing components that these information were not provided as, as though you these were intentional. Qualified, to, qualified entries, right? Quali yeah, 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 it was always qualified. qualified. Let's maybe yeah. start with, say, like the lands department, much declared to be the hotbed of corruption and, and so on. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, so what, what, where are we as a, as a country? Because that seemed to be, and we seem we're not getting any better. It just continued to, mm -hmm. to be spiraling out of control. Um, we keep getting all these, these um, rumors of uh, just, just, just um, Friday in the house, we approved $24 million for acquisition. And then there was a lot of debacle over land that was issued for 50000 being now expected to be bought back by the government for $5 million. How does the Auditor General Office countenance all of these sort of rumors and things that are, are going around? Yeah. The truth is, again, it, it hinges on understanding the role and how we go about doing what we do. For example, the, the lands, as you made reference to, we went in on different occasions, quite frankly, to do an audit. The first audit we did, um, well, one was presented in, in 2000, maybe it would have been 2009, 10, and that was the last submitted audit report on lands. We made an attempt after that. And during our process, the system crashed. Uh, uh, manual records weren't readily, readily available. Mm -hmm. So we had challenges. And then more recent, I think in 2016, we made an attempt again. And what happened? They used mm -hmm. the system, the electronic system, because they had that up, but it wasn't fully populated with the manual information. And then mm -hmm. we started using that information versus the manual. Mm -hmm. We could not reconcile in a lot of instances. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what really put a halt on that for me. When the draft was submitted, it was incomplete. The draft report from the supervisor, it was incomplete. Now, I had a discussion then at the time to explain to the NTUCB because I met with Mr. Mora, really nice mm -hmm. person. And I explained to him, he came with his team. And I said to him that this, these are the challenges we have at this time. I can't put a report out there. But what was really, really worrisome for me, if you give me a report as a supervisor, that's not gospel because you're working on my behalf. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I am obligated to take that report and to go through it and vet it and to ask questions. Now, that's a challenging part, not for all supervisors because mm -hmm. most of them love that interaction. Justify to me why this, how this happened, when this happened, that kind of thing. So we did that, and when I got it, I saw some names on the report. Coincidental, one of those persons called me to find out about a transaction at the Treasury. And I said, but this is a simple process. I finished answering his question. And I said, but well, hold up, since I have you on, this, on, on the line, can you explain to me about a transaction you did with government uh, regarding some land um, in, in Cayo and... We started, he said, Miss Dorothy, 
I am impressed, but you are all the way back there. Mm -hmm. This happened a long time ago. I said, and? He said, we settled that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But that was in the report. As a, now, as if a, I, uh, as a pending matter. Okay, yes, yeah. just imagine yeah. my presenting you, and that was not the only issue, but just imagine my presenting you with that, and your name or your name showed up. Mm -hmm. Would you not defend that? Of course. And then what credibility would it have on the report that I'm that preparing? That you're doing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Secondly, so you have to investigate properly. You have you know, to investigate so. properly. Yeah. And then the challenge is that when you get an assignment, mm -hmm. you are using your approach, your technique, because it's not limited to one set process. Mm -hmm. It's your expertise and professional um, approach to this that mm -hmm. will make it really fruitful. So if you are given such an assignment and it is not complete, and I say to you, you need to go back and do X, Y, Z, and it doesn't suffice, trust me, today, tomorrow, and any other day, I would never put a report out there mm -hmm. of that nature. So, so you're saying so, that, that even your, the, the persons doing the audit has to be, you have to have that level of confidence in them. Yes, as they well, have who to are come your with subordinates. Serious, yes, because they are using their professional judgment. <coughs> and prof professional judgment comes with not just qualifications on paper. You have to have the experience, understanding the standards and, standards and all the rest that associates with it. Mm -hmm. Then, as I mentioned to you earlier, besides that, going into lands, one would be of the impression, if you don't understand, that you're going to audit all the activities within lands. No. We would be concentrating on acquisitions mm -hmm. or the, you know, the sale of other. It's different. Mm -hmm. You find the topic, and then based on that topic, you set your <coughs> objectives, and then you proceed. Mm -hmm. It's not to cover everything. Mm -hmm. And another thing, a lot of things can happen in any audit, and any auditor will tell you that there is no guarantee that I will find what you're looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee because it depends on the testing method and all the rest of tools used to acquire the information. Well, if the person giving so, you the information was clever, then that information and is so, exactly if they and, and another thing with government, and not only lands, as it relates to documentation, mm -hmm. you know that a lot of the manual documents that sometimes we must rely on, mm -hmm. because when you go into the system, Listen, the system is so broken to pieces that when you go into the system and you look at, a, at an invoice, you have not a clue what the description is saying. Payment for a piece of land, audit, uh, reference, da 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 and that's it. It makes no sense no at sense, all. Yeah. So you need the actual source, yeah. and those sources can be all over the place. In the case of the treasure, for example, you notice that they rent and move, and uh, they're all around. They don't have any space to store documents. Mm -hmm. So those are off-site in places where they rent to store documents. So it is really, really a challenge. But it's not a cry. It's just the truth that there is a challenge. Mm -hmm. It's not beating down anybody. But you need to know the truth. Mm -hmm. um, OK, um, we we'll, we'll we'll have to take a break, break. But when you come back, we need to expand a little bit on things like the Petrocarib funds, the BNE funds, and all, all, all of these, um, mm -hmm. those, those monies that government had in their consolidated fund and how they were disposed of. At least rumors are they're just disposed of willy nilly. We want to get a feel of what the Auditor General Office looks at when you hear these noises. And, and, and out when there. you hear that the audit report is all at the lie on the table and it's presented yeah, what to the that means what and, that and mean? how long will it lie? How long will it stay on the table? <laughs> if, it stay, uh, you know? if, if it is still, it won't die. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, Mrs. Valerie, we'll be right back with you. Um, we'll take a break right now. It is now 7.30, and we, we'll be right back, like I said just now. The time is now 29 minutes to 8 o'clock. We'll now take a look at this morning's weather report. Here is meteorologist Francisco Wellington. Good morning. Good morning. Generally, fair weather prevails and will support mostly sunny skies today and partly cloudy skies tonight. Showers, if any, will be isolated. This trend will continue Tuesday and Tuesday night. Winds today will be out of the east, 5 to 15 knots, and seas will be light chop. Low tides occur at 5.55 this morning and 4.57 this evening. High tides follow at 12.10 this afternoon and 11.12 tonight. 
Temperatures this afternoon peak at 76 Fahrenheit up in the Maya Mountains, 87 along the coast and 90 inland. The moon comes up at 8.42 this morning and sunset is at 5.17 this evening. In the sargassum forecast, latest observations show little to no sargassum in our area and therefore sargassum impacts are expected to remain minimal during the next few days. And that's the latest from the Belize Weather Bureau. Do have a pleasant day. Digi, the premier name in voice and data, is also the country's leading provider of innovative services and solutions for small business and enterprise. At Digi Business, we offer solutions, tools, and applications to support your business needs. Reduce costs, improve efficiency, and excel in a changing world where no idea is too big and no task is too small. From technology advising to design implementation and management, our team of qualified solution sales and specialists can develop a reliable and robust infrastructure, allowing you to spend more time on what matters most, your business. Visit us online to explore how DigiBusiness innovative products and solutions can help your business reduce costs and improve efficiency. My parents always said, when it's time to build, invest in quality products that last a lifetime, even if it means paying a little more. It is now my turn to invest in my own home, and it's not even a question. It has to be a brand windows. My contractor recommends Oran because of the heavy-duty construction, the thickest gauge blades on the market, and the dual locks that allow lower louvers to close independently for privacy while the top remains open for airflow. These features make Oran aluminum louver windows the best on the market. With Oran aluminum louver windows, you get strength, durability, and beauty with an added layer of security and protection against debris and damaging winds. Come in and check out the variety of sizes and colors at Design Depot, located at Mile 3 Philip Goldson Highway in Belize City. Hello, welcome to Samsung's awesome experience right here in Belize. Come check it out. Not sure which Samsung Galaxy A series is right for you? Touch, play, and learn about your device before you buy. Once you've purchased your device, you can now benefit from the full Samsung service experience. Your phone is covered by a one-year local warranty. This includes manufacturer defects and software and hardware issues caused by the manufacturer. Enjoy your phone with peace of mind knowing that your Galaxy is protected. And when your warranty expires, you can still bring it to our certified Samsung Repair Center. Our technicians will diagnose and repair your device with Samsung original parts and machinery. Enjoy the Samsung experience when you shop at any of our authorized partners countrywide, including Cellular World, Digi, Odette's Home Center, The Barry, Quartz, Shopigas, Gadgets, and Cellular Plus. Join the Samsung experience in Belize today. It's a fact that with Smart, you get truly unlimited everything. Only with Smart, you get unlimited data anytime. While with the other guy, it's only double data on weekends. With unlimited data every day with Smart, there's no need to wait. So, it's a fact that our unlimited plans beat the competition. Stop being measured and told when to use your data and get unlimited talk, text, and data. Experience the true, true unlimited plans with smart. That's a fact. Make the switch and live smart. Over the years, vaccines have protected us from serious diseases like whooping cough, chicken pox, polio, measles, and others. Vaccines help your immune system do its job better and faster, and that protects you from serious diseases. Like a police officer, your immune system is always on patrol in your body looking for invading germs. When it comes across a germ, it begins releasing antibodies to fight the germ. These antibodies work to attack, weaken, and destroy the germ. The COVID-19 vaccine is no different. It will work to help your immune system fight COVID-19 effectively. You are important to your family and friends. Vaccines bring us closer. Alert! Alert! It's a deal alert! It's a Benny's deal alert! At 
Bennett's, you will find deal alerts on a wide selection of paints, including BH paints and texture light paints. Deal alert markdowns will also be applied to our complete selection of tiles, lights and fans, appliances, and much, much more. And remember, deal alert purchases will get double tickets to take part in the grand draw on December 18th to win $10,000. For more details, visit Benis.bz. Benis, quality and savings. The region of the Americas has a proud legacy of being a global leader when it comes to vaccination. Ours was the first region to eliminate smallpox, polio, rubella, congenital rubella syndrome, and measles. We also eliminated neonatal tetanus. Now more than ever, vaccines play a vital role in keeping us healthy. As we move forward with vaccinating against COVID-19, let us not forget the importance of our routine immunizations to keep us protected against other diseases. Talk to your healthcare provider today to make sure you and your family are up to date with all your vaccines. Vaccines bring us close up. Good morning, Belize, and good morning. I say good morning, Belize, and good morning. And how are you this morning? Está a 39 minutos para 7 o'clock, las 7 con 39 minutos aquí en nuestros estudios. Buenos días, Belize. Good morning, Belize, and thanks for choosing love. Our guest this morning, Troy, mm -hmm. Mrs. Dorothy Bradley, the well, the health retired auditor general from my from my school. But you got one more day before you retire, Mr. Dorothy. One more day tomorrow. Uh, I have one more day. <laughs> One, one more day, so, um, so technically she is still the Auditor, the General. Auditor General today. <laughs> preparing the, for retirement. And she can still present a report. Yes. Yes. Right? yes. Up, up yes. until tomorrow. Yes. But yes. you know, Mr. Arty, I've listened to these reports being presented in the National Assembly, and all the time we hear that report is ordered to lie on the table. Mm -hmm. How many reports are lying on the table right now, or, 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 or what does that exactly, what exactly does that mean? Well, it means, uh, and... It kind of presented some confusion for some people because there's a difference, at least that was always my understanding, uh -huh. but, um, between uh, a table document and one that is ordered to lie. Uh -huh. A table makes it an automatic public document. Um, document. Uh -huh. The other, once it is ordered to lie on the table, then it is passed to a committee. In this case, my reports would be passed to the Public Accounts Committee. Uh -huh. um, but you've, we all know the story that they were never the um, active at that time. <laughs> so there, as, as so far as I know, I have five, I have five <coughs> um, reports, three annual and two special reports. So those are, they, are lying on the table. Lying on the table, yeah. Oh, okay, I mean, nothing not, 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 not has been, been done, done about done that. Because recently, the Public Accounts Committee, who your reports got to have been reconstituted. Yes, reconstituted. Um, is there the hope that these... Audit these ones that are lying there are not going to, to, to be sort of stillborn, um, that they'll be looked at and, and addressed. And we know we are looking always, audit is backwards, and some people don't find that as sexy yeah. going, going backwards, but want to deal with the present and, and here and now. But uh, is there any hope that this new reconstituted um, pact is going to want to look at those reports and see what went on in, in the past? Well, uh, as the old adage says, if you want to know where you're going, you need to know who you are and where you came from. 
Thank you. So what is there certainly can, can present um, an insight mm -hmm. as to what was happening and how to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, we met last week, actually, the first meeting, and I feel very hopeful. We have always agitated and championed for that in our reports, that the, the, the way the public accounts committee was functioning, would, you would not, it would not yield anything um, positive. But um, this new constitution, I, I am very hopeful. Um, we have energetic people, um, Senator Salas, Senator Herrera, those persons I expect to be able to, to better uh, understand and question. Um, and then another concern from the Public Accounts Committee in the past, and this could be the teaching process, because when those reports were, were tabled, those that were tabled, and passed to the Public, public Accounts Committee, the audit report was attacked as opposed to those cited in the report. Mm -hmm. And that's not the role of the mm -hmm. public accounts. Mm -hmm. you, you oversee what was submitted from the audit from office the audit. and then question in, those who In are. the private sector, you mm -hmm. take the report seriously and try to, to, to repair or, or, or that's fix. That's the intent. Or to do what um, in the private sector, yeah. Yeah, yeah, once you get these recommendations, even yeah. the concerns are, are, are normally looked into by the private sector, mm -hmm. um, when, when audits are done, of their, their entities mm. in, the, in the public sector, it seems as though that they, especially the parliamentarian, they mm. try to destroy the report in terms of the context of what it's trying to, to put out there um, mm. generally. So it becomes a political issue. Yeah. So mm. it is but your feeling now that it, it I, I'm th hopeful. this is and, a better and move let me forward? Say, um, for example, the, constitutions, the Constitution also makes provisions for me to make a submission in the form of a special report outside mm -hmm. of the annual reports, mm -hmm. right? So um, I use, this is my discretion because as the Auditor General, I have that you power have that to do that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we have completed over the last, um, maybe, year, we have 49, 43 reports oh, that wow. we have done. Those reports weren't classified as special reports. Those are reports that went to management. So management has gotten those management reports, and in a sense... And in that meaning what, like the CEOs The respective and so accounting for, officers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, it is their obligation to respond within a time frame. <laughs> if they don't respond within a time frame, then a report will be made citing those and then make that special submission to the National Assembly so that the Public Accounts Committee and others, because... Uh, Honorable Espat is agitating for, um, for these uh, hearings to go public so that people can yes. understand exactly what is happening. Mm -hmm. What is the resistance to having it go public? Is, it, is there a resistance or there's a timing issue? Um, I did not sense in this last meeting that there was you know, any resistance at all. I mm -hmm. did not sense that. The, um, when <laughs> I was a public officer in the old days um, at, at Radio Belize, you know, we played records mm -hmm. and... Um, Every record had to be accounted for, and the audit department would come in and check every now and then. They were very active. And, but if one record was missing and you had signed for it, you are surcharged without question. Mm -hmm. do, do you still have a system like that um, in, 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 where, where a public officer can be surcharged for goods that, or or assets of the government that were assigned to him of or course, her? Yes, yes. That still exists? But it exists, but um, if it is effective, I would say no. Um, and a good oh. example of that, well, for that example, sense. you see people always talking about um, the usage of government vehicles. Yeah, that right? was... That would be a perfect ideal. You see people running around in those vehicles. If anything happened, the first thing that is required is that you do a, po a police report. Mm -hmm. Based on the police report and the findings, then a submission will be made to the Treasury, mm -hmm. um, citing the reasons for, the, for, for whatever happened, whatever accident. Mm -hmm. And then it will go on to justify whether that person should be held accountable. And if, then he or she should be surcharged. And then if a vehicle is total or not in use, 
then the process goes on because then it is a loss to government. I think in right? the old days there were several people who were surcharged yeah. for vehicles that were damaged. We have seen, we have yeah. seen so, ministers' vehicles driven into the sea and, and, no, and, and, and totally and destroyed. And documentation, and it isn't properly documented. And seemingly documented. just replaced as a result. So but, we don't know what the, the behind-the-scenes situation is. I challenge you and the public, if you are more engaged, better engaged in understanding what should happen, because, listen, the pieces are stores, others, and those are small little books. Uh, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. And, and you don't have to memorize anything. Mm -hmm. You're talking about vehicles, you go specifically to that, and it tells you exactly what is to be done. So a lot of violations have been happening over time. And like my office, the accountant general, even the AG's ministry, everybody is short and staff. So is it that we're short and staff? <laughs> Maybe, if you look at, at the um, requirement for staffing then versus what is required now. So we never amended the then and now. Mm -hmm. What we had then and what we need now. We have outgrown that and we need more people. Well, we mm -hmm. saw mm -hmm. in the past where government tend to be a little bit creative by trying to take some of the funds out of the ambit or, or scrutiny of the Auditor General. We go to the Petrocarib Fund for argument's sake where we see we, we were getting rumors of major, major abuse, we build tacos, all of these things, but monies were being used for. And then government saying, I don't want Ms. Bradley peeping in on, on what we're doing with the Pet Petrocarib Fund, so I'll move it out of the realm and I'll create my own entity called Bill, which you can't look into, um, or, did, or, or, or would you have been able to look into Bill as well as how those monies were being spent since we have this sort of allegation, especially as it relates to contract values and things yeah. like that. We, we could look into any entity receiving monies from mm. the government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, have that, we have that authority. But what we have found because of our resource um, limitations, that those entities who have private auditors, because we will have to give credence to those audit, to those audit establishments, if they have that, then really and truly, we would say, well, okay, if they have, let's concentrate on. But there's another catch. When you heard about Pibil and all the other atrocities that maybe had happened on the, on the Petro Caribbean, I would not have said to my officers that we would look at Pibil because you and everybody else out there knows that that should not happen. So what you want me to do, go and audit and tell you how many people eat how much, that, that won't happen. Mm -hmm. But as it relates to, maybe we can say maybe our works, Ministry of Works as it relates to the streets mm -hmm. and those areas, we don't have the capacity. Mm -hmm. That's the truth, whether you want to hear it or whether people don't want to hear it, we don't have the capacity. Who will test the quality? Who will mm -hmm. test the value? Do we go back to Ministry of Works? And see Who's dealing with that? Yeah. That's, that would contradict everything. Yeah. We don't have that kind of budget to go out and outsource <coughs> some of what we want to do. Now, a lot of what we're doing requires legal guidance. Yeah. And I don't know that I have ever been turned away from the AG's ministry because by law, I go there. But those people are swamped with work. And when I want it, I want it now. Mm. I can't wait until next week or... And whom, whomever is assigned to work with me must report to me because that information is mine. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of, lots of issues that really needs to be ironed out. But I would say to you that my consolation is that last week I presented to the Prime Minister a draft act um, for consideration and presentation to the National Assembly. And that act really and truly would be establishing the independence of the office. Mm -hmm. And they were extremely receptive. Mm -hmm. I'm also happy that, or pleased, that we have a Minister Koi, whom I think has a background in understanding a lot of what is needed. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel really, really hopeful that, that things will happen. Mm -hmm. So that, those are your recommendations upon leaving now that, that, that the act be... I have already submitted a, that, that, yes, that and, and I got extreme um, support through mm -hmm. the EU. We have a team here working through the Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. and they um, provided major assistance uh, in establishing the act and then IDB 
I requested from them assistance to get a second review. And so I got a second okay, review. Okay, so I said to, something to, viable. Yeah. Yes, and then when I finished um, with that, endorsed. we have we have affiliations with Intosai, and Intosai is the Inter International Organization for Supreme Audit Institutions. That organization was born out of the economic development um, section of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Now they're independent, so they're providing support to all audit offices, external government, external audit offices under the UN. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of support from them. So in turn, then what I did after the second review, I then went to an arm under the Intosai um, umbrella, mm -hmm. and I asked for them to review it again for me to make sure that we had everything in line. So I think I have exhausted that part, and I, then I made the submission. So it's very important if you want to muzzle corruption that the office of the Auditor General be strong, extremely strong, yes. and can exercise what is expected of yes. it. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Would you comment on that, that um, how, how, how important that is? If you, because we keep hearing about corruption. Oh, we have to put an end to corruption. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to put an end to corruption. Mm -hmm. But the office that can really hold people accountable mm -hmm. is the office well, of the well, Auditor General. it's one of those, one of those uncut so you don't that need to yes, strengthen that office. Yes. The UNCAC speaks right. of my office being, um, you know, um, built to, to strengthen um, mm -hmm. that oversight uh, responsibility. Mm -hmm. But it is extremely important. Um, in the past, it was the nature of how things were done. It wasn't wrong. Um, you wouldn't find an Auditor General out speaking because it was done within and it, is, it was kept within. But it was also effective. No. Because that has changed, the dynamics has changed, because mm -hmm. business is not only within government, most of what happens within spawns out or stems from out coming in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The partnership. So people on the outside need to really, really understand what is happening. As I kept, I, I always say, this, this is my mantra, advocacy. You have to be out there. We have to go out. There was a time audit would not be out in the schools. You be. Um, the other university, Galen. 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 Galen, extremely receptive. We have been there on different occasions to present to students. They express their interest. It's so much so that now we open the office when they are doing interns, and we try our best to facilitate because yeah. they have a better understanding. And I often say to my to my managers and supervisors, when these people leave our offices, understanding what is happening, they go home to mommy and daddy and they help to spread yeah, it. Mm -hmm. it is all but about. it is important to be out there. No, that's easier said than done. Because listen, as men, and please don't take this personal, if you guys cry, you are the big men, you are strong, you are, if I cry, that woman, woman cry, yeah? <laughs> So it puts <laughs> double, <laughs> double, if you, <laughs> pass a, a rule or, or law that mm -hmm. this is how things will be done in here. Mm -hmm. People respect you because, ooh, you're a man. When I do it, she too vindictive, she petty, she, we need to change. Mm -hmm. We need to change in our So they, they apply some gender it, to, to the post. It is well. always, yeah. gender is always on the forefront of everything mm -hmm. because there is always, while we are working towards it, there is always that, that on the there, there is this culture, Chief and um, Dorothy, mm -hmm. that the Auditor General is a nuisance as far <laughs> as the public service is concerned. It's a, it is in the way. It, it, it is an annoyance. It's giving me a report mm -hmm. after spend a, a CEO got 55 things to do and you could add 10 more. Mm -hmm. um, what needs to happen to create that level of accountability? built into the public service. Chief talk about the surcharge component, but some of it is, is not necessarily where you could pinpoint mm -hmm. that there is one thing missing or two things missing, but it's a, a general frame of where we just sort of willy-nilly go through our, our process during the day without understanding that we have to follow certain pro protocols Pro simple, and procedures. Simple, simple thing like a vehicle logbook. Mm -hmm. You know, each government vehicle should have a lot. Who follows book. that? Who, uh, who deals with that anymore? How much fuel you put in, where you went, and, and all of that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. that, who that, that's, that's who the monitors that? So I'm monitors. Saying, <laughs> that is not the audit's job, though. <laughs> I, I'm I saying, but, but, but culturally, it's a but cultural yes, thing. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And I often say that 
um, if you're the kind of petty person looking for popularity and for people to like you, don't ever think that this is the job for you. <laughs> <laughs> it won't work. Yeah, yeah. you can't take Listen. it, Chief. We want to be popular. Yes, and then, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then <laughs> even when Pumpered and cried, then you guys will be on top. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is a challenge. Well, but let our me company is audited, by the way. So yeah, well, well, let me tell you, there's a huge, and, I, and it comes back to what I, I keep saying, right? That a part of the process has gone left another part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, who should be held accountable? Mm -hmm. The accountability rests with the accounting officer. And the accounting officer, in most instances, would be the CEO. Right. Except for under the Ministry of Finance, I think uh, those heads of departments, mm -hmm. they are accounting officers. But you can understand why, because it's huge, right? But just let us use this as an example. The CEOs, these are a bright set of people. I, I wouldn't question that. Mm -hmm. However, as it relates to the operations of the public service, mm -hmm. you can't walk, come, in to, come in with a briefcase, sit at your desk, and wait on the financial advisor, who are the finance officers and administrative officers, mm -hmm. to tell you what to do or to explain to you. You need to know so that you can ask questions. There's a huge disparity. Is, is that yeah, that yeah, PS yeah, thing? Uh, uh, you see what I'm. And that has always been the, the rub with the CEOs because they're more political imperatives as opposed to the career public officers, which were the public well, permanent, permanent secretaries. secretaries. Well, you see, and then back then, those permanent secretaries, and you may be able to attest to that, Mr. Mm. Rene. Those people are well trained. Oh yeah. Let me tell you, when I left the central bank. I worked in the operations, what was then the operations department, mm -hmm. right? Out of that department, you had budget, finance, currency, banking. Mm -hmm. You needed to understand just about everything that happens there. So when I left there and I came across to the government, nothing new for me. As a matter of fact, because I dealt directly with those kinds of transactions on behalf of the government, I came in and I was able to say, but this isn't correct. This isn't how you do it. So in essence, when you come to the table at that level, you need to come equipped. I've, I've, heard, permanent, right? I've heard permanent secretaries um, telling ministers in, in my, mm -hmm. my days, minister, this is not the way this is done. Right? If you want to do it, it, it has to be done this way. Mm -hmm. And I've seen ministers say, okay, because, you know, they're, they're, they're um, yeah. both edge, you know, the objective sometimes is achieved, but not yeah. the way how the minister wanted it. Mm -hmm. You know? mm -hmm. so, so the breakdown the right happens, and, and that is the breakdown I'm talking about. Because mm -hmm. even within, you have AOs and, and FOs who, and let me tell you, before I even say this, you have people who are excellent at what they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you find the highest concentration of intelligent people within the public service. Mm -hmm. I would not hesitate to say that. But there's another side to the coin. People lack what is required to be effective. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have it, then you create those gaps that requires an infusion of outside people to come in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is what you need. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't know that you're doing it wrong until somebody brings it to your attention, you know? It, this is what I do. And there is also a difference in people. When you're a process orienter, you are instructed to sign, pass to Mr. Rene, he signs, he passes to you, and then you release. Mm -hmm. That's a process. You have result orienters. I don't need to pass it to Mr. Rene because when it gets to you, it is your obligation at the end of the day anyways to do this. Mm -hmm. And it requires 10 more steps, and you will do that because you want the results. And mm -hmm. that is important. Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. you know. Very so, awesome. listen, the, the public service, and I think everybody would agree, needs to be reformed. What's yeah. next? What's next for Dorothy? For Dorothy, <laughs> Dorothy needs to step back. Um, I really need time to just reflect. It doesn't mean that I will go in a corner. It doesn't mean that I will be in isolation for years or months. It might be a month or two. But really and truly, I have to celebrate me and this milestone. Because I've worked at the Treasury, where, let me tell you, there were many days. I don't even know those people. They call on a daily basis, Mrs. Bradley. Can you help me to get my, my um, gratuity? 
because they have ailments and sickness and, uh -huh. and all the rest of it. Literally chasing what is theirs uh -huh. to satisfy their urgent needs. And I always said, boy, I would never want this to happen to me. And now that I'm here, because, I mean, I reach here so quick. Honest to uh -huh. God, it's uh -huh. like, where, where did uh -huh. the time go? Uh -huh. yeah. I need to really step back, give thanks. Give thanks to my creator because he was the one who allowed me to walk every day in my office, any office, with my crown. Honestly. So I knew I was as well. you had yeah. staff oh, issues. Yeah. And How many years have you served on this authority? Um, ten, ten years at audit, 11 years between Treasury, um, General Sales Tax, and as Chief Elections Officer. So the experience yeah. was just... So like 21 years? Yes, yeah, 21 years. Yeah. It's, it's really great for me. Uh -huh. You know, I would not trade anything. And I often say, just like we always say to the politicians, the opposition is important. My job, it is important to have the opposition. Mm -hmm. They are the safeguards and vanguards to, to keep everything going. You check and balance. That's right. So, you know, you know, cry. And, and but, I think um, the Constitution recognized that uh, when they put in place the Auditor General and tried to make it as independent, it's a 109, no, Chief? 109. It is 109. 109. Um, and classified just the DPP, the Auditor General, and the judges. Yeah, yeah. They're all under, the Constitution speaks to their appointment, it speaks the behavior, to their remuneration, mm. it speaks to their pension, mm. everything. It mm. is different the from the regular public officer. Well, mm. well we hope that, that you know, uh, as you leave the... Let me the say, to, 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 say that different, the, public, the pub, regular public officer is appointed by the Public Services Commission. commission. Mm -hmm. The Public Services Commission is a constitutional provided for body, mm -hmm. just like how the Auditor General a, is right. a constitutionally provided for body. So on par, yeah. basically. So that is why the general mm -hmm. has so much mm -hmm. power and authority to audit the public mm -hmm. service and, 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 and to influence the an elevated service. Post. Because it's an elevated an post, elevated the public office. service commission cannot say anything to the auditor general mm -hmm. except comply with what the auditor general wants. Exactly. I take, the, as the auditor general, he or she takes no directive mm, no from directive anybody. From okay. nobody. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim? And uh, so... Time has flown. Time has surely flown. Yeah. Yes, yes, as quickly as your, your time to, to leave the, the, the post <laughs> this morning went very, very quickly yeah, yeah. in relation to, to, you know, so many things going on. We hope that mm -hmm. you would come back afterwards maybe to kind of add some insight and, about and what is going on. It's so important, you know, because in, 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 in you have your own company, you need to know what you're doing. Yeah. And the only way you'll know what you're doing is for it to your accounts mm -hmm. to be audited. Mm -hmm. Right? Then you know if you're doing the right thing, the wrong thing, where to go. Mm -hmm. You know, so to me, an audit is key. And it, it becomes you know? even more glaring when you're talking about borrowing from those institutions abroad. Yes, uh, the banks they they won't any money to financial, present an audited report. financial yes, standards. Yes, yeah. yes, it's a way to, it has to be audited. To add credibility to whatever numbers you're presenting. Exactly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Exactly. Well, we certainly wish you all so imagine the best. For a country. Yeah. Imagine Even the person that does that for a country yeah. and the importance of the office of the Auditor General. Yes. It's a very important office. Yes, indeed. I, I need yeah. to admit, though, that um, quite frankly, it is only, I would say, persons who, who are not fully um, abreast of the office, of the powers of the Auditor General, that would um, be negative or try to negate whatever it is mm -hmm. um, we do in that office. But I would tell you readily, hastily, that for the most part, People on the outside do understand. Do understand. Do un people, sure people outside, outside of the country understand. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to examine those reports that we have done, and if you use even the immigration report, you would understand the consequences and implication it has mm -hmm. on a country and its people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter about stopping a, a Mexican or a Guatemalan from coming across the country. It has nothing to do with that. It's much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Serious mm -hmm. implications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and nobody never stopped. I, 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 I need to say this. With all that has happened, with such a critical, crucial findings that we had, mm -hmm. nobody has stopped to ask, how are you doing? Do you have security? Mm -hmm. who, who's, who, who's spoken to you or your staff? How are you guys managing? Hmm. Nothing. Not, nothing. Nothing. Is, is there so much so one person said to me, I would suggest to you, at the very least, when you are going home, to at least change your direction. Yeah. 
I said, well, I live on a one-way street. I don't know how that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. But yeah, yeah. but it's, it's very serious, yeah, you know? It's, it's much yeah. bigger than it's just, scary. you know? Indeed. Yeah. Is there, is there a, a, have you heard rumors or any idea who your predecessor may well be? Or is there any indication? No, not at, not at this point. No, I don't know. Your successor, I mean. My successor. Yeah, yeah no, successor. Nobody, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, well, Chief? Well, Mr. Rati, I want to wish you the very best. And thank you. Um, I know the value of audit, so I will thank you on behalf of the country. I know a lot of people might not be able to say thank you for the services you have done. Yeah. So on behalf of everyone, I think I can say thank you for the services that you have rendered to our country. Yeah, it's very, very, it's very, very critical. Thank and what it, do, what it did was to create some sort of semblance of shining a light at a time when we were going through some difficult times. Yeah and possibly still will. And so we hope that whoever the successor is um, will be somebody... And let's hope that some of those reports that, that are lying on the table are one they taken off the table and <laughs> acted upon, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. They're, they're, they're tabled and... Uh, and they're, they're lying on the table. And, and people that's can how get a, the point, you know? an idea of what's in those reports yeah. uh, uh, as well because, um, you know, nothing, nothing um, helps a, a, a country like ours is when we shine the light on this issue and shine and the light. light is shined. True. Shown. How is it? Shine, shown. 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 Shown by auditing, by mm -hmm. good auditing. So thank you so much. Well, I want to Mr. also Arty. say thank you for your continuous support in um, championing uh, the needs for our country. It is very important. Mm. Um, I say thank you to, for example, my vendors at the market. Um, I remember going in one day and one man said to me, not today. You know, get to it today. And I said, what happened? So I tell my wife that this lady come to my stall mm -hmm. regularly. And she said, you must be crazy. The conversation then evolved. And I was just so impressed with the fact that people at all levels in different quarters understand what is happening. And so um, I really want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all my other stakeholders. Um, but to more ask for the continued support because it has, it, it has provided for me a backdrop. Whenever I know that an attack, or I usually would hear of an attack after the attack, mm -hmm. I know that people on the outside understand what is happening. Mm -hmm. And that is important for the office. The support is very important. The support can't happen if you don't know. So I beg of you, I beg of the country, please keep engaged. Yeah. understand I, I, and discuss don't be afraid because it's not about political no. um, persons and operative it's about your country, country and if you keep engaged you definitely will make a difference so on that note I say thank you heartfelt thank you to everybody for the support and thank you too Mr. Arte, for the services and we certainly wish you all the best and, and hope that best. you'll come back from time to time and give yeah, us your, give us your, your views and insight and things that are occurring <laughs> as we know that it's not going to stay quiet all the time. Yeah. There's yeah. going to have issues that yes. we may want to mm -hmm. get insight into. And certainly okay. we, it's good to know that persons well, like you are out there. It's mm -hmm. nine minutes past eight o'clock. We're going to pass the time and so we'll just take the break quickly and come back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. easier with Atlantic Bank's chip and contactless card. Simply tap your own card to pay for purchases of up to $300 at any Atlantic Bank POS machine. It's easy, it's secure, it's contactless.
largest house building company in Belize that combines the best skilled workers, high grade materials, and the latest technology to produce the highest quality wooden residential structures. Request any size, color, and the home layout you want. Choose from hardwood or painted metal outer walls. Let's can modify any of their existing house plans to your satisfaction. Complete with all the installation services you need anywhere in the country, including Ambergris Cree. They can also lift your house to your desired height up to nine feet. From properly treated and cured lumber to quality sidings and floorings, let Pletz Home Builders give your home the finish you need. Hey customers, get in on the Platts big promotion. We are offering 16 by 24 shell with metal siding for $15,000. 20 by 30 shell with metal siding for $20,500. 20 by 40 shell with metal siding for $24,000. This promotion is going on now. For prices or questions, call 823-0398 or go to www.pletshomebuilders.com. Pletch Home Builders, we build to suit your needs. Are you planning to start a garden? Does your car need to be clean? Don't worry, the Life Skills Multipurpose Group got you covered. If you don't have a car to wash, the Life Skills Multipurpose Group has cars on sale at very affordable prices. We also have cement blocks on sale with skilled masons and carpenters ready to do that driveway, fence, or demolition. But wait, there's more. We also have reliable plumbers waiting for your call because no job is too big or too small for us. So call us at 614-4596 or visit us at 12 Caesar Ridge Road, Belize City, near the Port of Belize. Doctor, what are your thoughts on abortion? I am definitely pro-choice instead of pro-life. Do you think that teenagers should have access to birth control without parental consent? Absolutely, I would support teenagers getting birth control without their parents. Religion and medicine, in your opinion, do they mix? They should mix and they are mixing as we are speaking now. Let me explain, Tamar. Proper Dosage with Dr. Poyar is an all-new show here on Love. This is where the social issues meet the health issues and the controversy starts now. Proper dosage, catch us at 9 p.m. on Love FM and Love Television. And it's now 13 minutes after 8 o'clock, so if you haven't been at work and you're supposed to be there at 8, then you're late. Chief, um, we're inside the morning show as That's usual, right. and this morning it's Monday, December the 6th, counting down towards the Christmas, some 19 days or so away from the Christmas. But nonetheless, we can't forget that we're inside a pandemic. Yep. And as a result of that, life has to be in some control mechanism following our protocol. And, and certainly with us this morning, Chief, we're joined, we're pleased to join, no stranger to the media, of course. Um, Nurse Casilda Bowman. Yes, she's the manager of the Carl Husha Memorial Hospital COVID unit. And Nurse Javier Grito. Good as morning, well. everyone. Yes. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, and everyone. It's a pleasure to have you good here. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here, too. Yes. I understand you might have from the nice news to tell us at, at the beginning. How, where are we right now? Ah, well, right now, like I said, our numbers are good. We're done. Um, we're about seven patients, right, Brito? Yes, seven, seven? patients. Yes, seven patients. From a high of, of 
for a high of about 26 during the week mm -hmm. to 7 today. today. Okay. Yes, that's, wow. the, that's the latest update last night. Seven patients, which two our, pa two our patients are high flow. One of the patients is mechanical ventilator. So right now the numbers are with us. But, you know, we have to keep using the tools that we have mm -hmm. to protect ourselves. And we must always be on the lookout at yes. what continue doing our mask and our social distancing right. and, and doing necessary protocols, you know, mm -hmm. cleansing of the hands, etc., etc. What, 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 what seem to, what would be your, your medically professional view to see the sudden dip or uh, uh, decline? Because um, I know September we were like in a raging storm. Yes. yes. So well, 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 for me, I think one of the good things that we can recognize is that our numbers for vaccination had increased. Uh, um, from 50 to I think it's like at 60 something percent. Mm -hmm. it's, it went higher, so that is definitely a contribution. Um, of course, people adhering to the policies and procedures are set in place. Um, while I would say that I have a good number right now today, by tonight it may be a different story. I think in the week, um, my assistant and I, we were, we were, you know, we were, while we were planning, we recognized that okay, good, mm -hmm. we have a low number right now, so we will terminal the entire area mm -hmm. all right um but within a couple hours we got eight admissions and so we were we were low then we right, went right back up all right so it's we are in a constant state of always planning and being prepared for expecting anything mm -hmm. you know because we're not out of it yet yeah. the we're numbers are it. good and we want to make sure that it continues to be good mm -hmm. yeah the it? numbers the numbers always fluctuate the clear example is last week we were 16 16 patients and during the week we went all the way up to 26 patients and then now we are on this census so yeah, it's it fluctuate, a at seven. yes it fluctuated it fluctuate very quick okay, yes quickly so the, like, like, like what um, um Nurse casilda is saying um, in one day maybe you can have um so many admissions that mm -hmm. you wonder what the heck is going on here yes definitely you know? one yes. behind the other uh -huh. you you there, there is this mention, and I think you may have said it before, um, that th there needs to be a level of concern and urgency on the part of patients whenever they 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 they, they come down or contract the the virus. Um, some persons seem to wait too long. Yes. To get treatment. Yes, definitely. Um, like for me, like I would want to make sure. First of all, you have to prepare yourself before you get the virus, right? Um, a lot of times we have to understand that we are, you have to sleep properly, eat properly, exercise, try to get in at least three days of exercising, 20 minutes, a, you know, for that time to that, get your body ready, healthy, in the event that you're exposed. So that's prophylaxis care. Mm -hmm. All right. And then in the event that you are exposed, you have to know what to expect and what to do. And this is the, the main reason you guys are so always letting everybody know what to expect what to do so that you can mentally prepare yourself um one of the things that i recognize is that our people are afraid mm -hmm. all right and it's a natural thing i mean it's it's afraid to reach that point where you're mm -hmm. not able to breed um and so we don't want to reach that point we don't want you to wait until it's so far so late that we anything that we do doesn't make won't help all right and so one of the things we tell people to preparation is you want to always have a thermometer you would want to always have a pulse oximeter all right and a pulse oximeter checks your heart rate and your oxygen saturation mm -hmm. and the oxygen saturation is important because that tells you how much oxygen is flowing around your body all right maybe you could um, um tell us the numbers we should be looking for on okay the yes definitely so for anybody who um is of course if you're not an athlete or you you don't want to your oxygen saturation or your heart rate you don't want your oxygen saturation to go below 94. 94 okay. 94. so when it goes below 94 you, 94. Should, bring an alarm you should start to think okay let me start to figure out what will be my next plan of action yes all right so 94 is that that number you yeah, don't want to go below that threshold. yes so. all right and then of course your heart rate your heart rate fluctuates based on a lot of the, a host of things yeah so if you're food. Um, anxious, your heart rate will go up. If you're having an infection process, your heart rate will go up. 
if of course and if one of those infection rate is covid it will take up your heart rate as well mm -hmm. but we don't want anything to go above 100 110 all right okay. so what will be the bottom number there? okay so for at least you it will be sometimes you'll see athletic patients having heart rates of 50. 50. and that is quite normal for them because uh -huh. they're athletic they're agile they run they do a lot of things that keeps mm -hmm. their heart in that pace uh -huh. all right so nothing below 50 nothing above 100. so between 50 and 100 when we're reading yes. the oximeter yes. that, 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 that is where the heart rate is mm -hmm. concerned mm -hmm. and nothing below 94 94 94 percent you start to Yes, we will saturation. start to have a concern. Yes. All right. So it doesn't mean that okay, you will alert and hurry come to the hospital. You might, it might go back again. Yes, right? it might, might go up. Temporary. Yes. Situation. So you, what you want to do is to you want to watch it, monitor it, and check it quite often. Is there anything physical or so that one can do if they start to see that reduction in the saturation? Um, I don't know, Brita, if you want to um, add anything. Well, if your saturation goes uh, start to drop. The mechanism of compensation of the body is that you will have an increase on just your respiratory rate to to try to the, uh, to increase yes. that that mm -hmm. oxygenation in your body. So your respiratory rate might increase above above 22. So that is also a next point of concern because you 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 will able to recognize if you know those kind of things is that if your heart rate is going uh, above 22 in a resting position then something is going wrong or is something is doing wrong above 22 you said 22 yes. respirations in per one minute. minute in one minute in one minute yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. exactly yeah. and and uh -huh. so to answer one of your question your question was to if you see this happening you know there are certain things that you can do before you come to the hospital mm -hmm. like for example from covid started i i don't sleep on my stomach so I practice to sleep on my stomach because it helps. It helps the flow to of sleep secretion. On your stomach? Yes, it's what we call a proning position. All right, and I know I I, I will have Rita sleep explain. A, sleep on your belly. Yes, yeah, sleep on <laughs> your belly. All right, that it's called a proning position and it's very helpful. And so when you see saturation start at maybe at that point ninety four, do different maneuvers to see if that will take it up. Mm -hmm. All right, because that means the COVID is affecting a part of the lungs mm -hmm. all right so usually the lateral part position would be if you lay on your side and see if you can tolerate that sometimes we have patients who are not able to tolerate that all right meaning that they lay on their side and they start having more difficulty breathing mm -hmm. all right then you lay on your other side then you lay on your belly all right and of course laying on your stomach you don't want to just it's just like a 15 minute process you have to do it for a long time mm -hmm. all right you try like for me, as you get COVID, practice to start to lay, sleep on your stomach. The best, that's one, I don't know if Brito, you want to add anything else to? Uh, because the morphology of the lump is, is more suitable to, to sleep on, on the belly, because at the back of the, our back, uh, we have in the lumps more alveolites. When we are sleeping on our back, then those alveolites are compressed by the weight of the heart Gravity. and pushing uh, the, orga, the other organs. So when we sleep on our belly, the weight of the heart is resting on our sternum and that will help us to, to have better circulation in all the alveolites in the, in the lungs. It's not, it's not crushing the lungs. Yes. Yes. Well, what about yes. sideways? Uh, so yes. Some people say the left side is better than the right yes. side yes. and that sort of thing. Uh, Receiving sideways. Yeah. What about that? Well, the, the thing is that remember what we want to do is a trial and error because one thing doesn't fit everybody. Right. And so if it if you're comfortable on the side, then it, then that's better for you. Um, the side does this almost the same thing because remember, the for some the the, the most materials or the the most important part of your lungs is in the back. Mm. All right. So and that is where we want to make sure that the alveoli, which then helps to exchange gas back and forth oxygen that we need uh -huh. is open mm -hmm. if we're on our back the, the, this, this that, that has the most alveoli it crushes mm -hmm. it collapses. Mm -hmm. and so what you want to do is to give yourself the best fighting chance which is try to get the bigger alveoli to open up mm -hmm. as remember the front is shared space it has your heart that has to um, take up some of that space so everything like I say most majority of it is at the back so you want to prune find a position that you can 
handle, okay. all right? Lateral, proning, or whichever lateral side. Mm -hmm. We don't want to recommend to sleep on your back as much, but okay. if, you, if it's a moss, it's a mm -hmm. moss, all right? Try to at least go at least a high folders, which would be not flat, but it's head elevated. Head mm -hmm. elevated. Yeah. yeah. It, in terms of the, we, 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 we saw a number of deaths um, over the, the last year, so maybe yeah. close to 500 plus occurred uh, during the year. And there's always this issue that pops up and it comes up a lot of time when we're talking with other medical experts, mm -hmm. um, that there is a supply issue uh, mm -hmm. of the critical components that needed to be able to maintain person's um, well-being. Um, speak to us a little bit about how that contributed to, to, to maybe, maybe some of those, possibly do, those deaths if, if, if necessary, and where are we now going forward and what kind of um, support the, the unit is now getting that okay. we didn't probably get in the past? Um, to, be, to be frank and to be honest and transparent, we had all we needed to produce or provide care for everybody. All right, um, at not one moment in time, a patient would have come in and a ventilator was not available. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and those were life saving mechanisms. No, there are times when maybe a medication or two, two was not available. However, we always have a substitute. And when we would say that, for example, a medication is not available, it's because it's running low and we have to figure out what would be the next, next best step, mm -hmm. right? For example, with our MIDAS, we had MIDAS, we always had MIDAS, and, but what we had to do was to be proactive and recognize that, listen, okay, this amount that we have may not last a long time, so we have to use our backup one and use our MIDAS as only our induction agent, and induction agent means that that is what we will solely use to put the patient to sleep, mm -hmm. all right? And then we will maintain sleep with another drug all right and so really and truly a lot of the contributions to our debt are people coming in late okay. and and the whole pathophysiology of covid sometimes there is literally nothing we can do to save a life mm -hmm. because of how severe the covid is mm -hmm. and that is why i'm saying guys we have the vaccine we mm -hmm. need to use it and there, utilize and there are persons it. that may have had comorbidity no, no, too no 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 people that have passed um, at the hospital Mm -hmm. uh, due to COVID, uh, what you have a percentage that uh, have been un, um, unvaccinated that that passed uh, due to that um, being vaccinated uh, we, against those vaccinated. I mean, we definitely have those numbers. I mean, I didn't get it. Today is the one time I came on the media that I didn't ask my <laughs> epidemiologist <laughs> to give me some numbers. But, I'm, I'm top of your but, head. but we we have a high number of unvaccinated people Th that, that, that would be dies. The highest number. Huh? That would be the highest number. Yes, majority. The, the majority. majority. It is uh, a large number of people not um, not vaccinated, and I can tell you because we see it. Um, I can't really give you a number per se, and then this is camera, and it's going to be live, and then I repeat it and say I give the wrong number. So I know I give no number. It is live. <laughs> yes, it is but live. but it is a large number, and it is you know, and we're still seeing a high number of people not vaccinated at at this late juncture. Being admitted not vaccinated. Yes. Yes, surprising, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then my thing is that, like, what, what I don't understand is that people, fine, you don't want to be vaccinated, but why go and socialize with other people without recognizing the consequence for your action? Mm. Yeah. And sometimes the consequence of your action is death. Yeah. It's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. You know? Yeah, indeed. Uh, there, there, is, there is these special drugs, the Rendezivir, the mm -hmm. Regeneron, and so do we have that? Because some people believe that that's a critical, th those drugs have been used internationally as a critical component. Yes. How, how, do we have access to that? Or have um, people have definitely, access? we have always had remdesivir. Um, mm -hmm. We have never gone out of uh, remdesivir so far. Um, we also have the new monoclonals also that we try. We don't get a large amount, but we still have to provide. But with everything, what you guys have to understand is that these drugs, we can have it. But if you come to the late stage of your respiratory failure, then giving you the drugs really still is not effective. What would be the adequate stage of respiratory, respiratory failure for one to go to the hospital? So for, for, for me, as soon as you're starting to have that fighting to take a breath in, that becomes more difficult. Because you will know 
we can be talking here and we're not fighting to breed. No. But if you're trying to get out a sentence and it's harder because you have to stop and breed and that is an indication that maybe, listen, that with your oxygen saturation, you're looking at your respiration, all these things combine together. And of course, yes, you're not professionals, but you know your body. You understand? So for I had COVID last year and I was able to tell, okay, when my progression of COVID was getting worse, not just because I'm a nurse, but because I was able to feel it. I was not able to walk the normal spot. I was not able to, there's a lot of things that changed in the, the okay. way your body is re reacting or performing. And so you have to be pay keen attention. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And so that's important. So guys, if you have COVID, you have to then recognize that, listen, okay, no, I'm at a point where I, I can't do anything about it. I'm exposed, but I need to monitor myself, make sure I eat the time because a lot of people lose appetite. Uh -huh. But we have to realize that the food that we're eating is to give us energy. You may not want to eat, yeah, but still eat. Yeah, people still lose their taste, their smell. Yes. Unfortunately, I lost my taste and smell and I was still hungry. <laughs> and I was like, man. Yeah, but, I was, eat, <laughs> yes, I was, but you say you have to still eat. All right. So regardless of what, we have to know we have to still eat. We still have to drink enough fluids, take our vitamins, rest. It's important that we sleep. We get enough rest to help uh -huh. our body to compensate or to, to, to try to get itself well, all oh. right? Um, before we go to break, uh, can we have to take a break? Um, I just want you to quickly tell me if you can recall any single experience that stands out in your mind the most with regards to patients uh, being admitted with COVID. A oh, single experience, I have a lot. I know you um, have a lot. Huh, say, but single experience I could recall. One of the... Uh, a family bringing in their relative female particularly completely blue wow um saturation 40. Uh, huh. i was full i had to think quickly on my feet trying to figure out, okay i have i have one bed but the bed you know i have to do some changes so i i quickly had to take out somebody out of bed to put the person to bed to start action right away to start the intervention and so that stood out to me because one condition changed very quickly and two she waited at least five days before she come in she came in okay mm. so she had the problem for five days and then yes. came in already yes. blue like you said yes now. and i mean i think two days prior no saturation the no. two days prior to her coming in she really couldn't breathe that well she it became laborious it became more difficult she her respiration increased so that means her heart load was increasing all right, because the body is trying to compensate for, oh, because we were to intervene, you understand? But uh -huh. we can't intervene if you're home. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that, that, like, that stood out to me yeah. because like we could or? have, no, she didn't make it. Uh -huh. it was too late. She, she lasted uh, like at least almost 10 days. Oh, well she lasted long. So yes, so she lasted a while. So did he, yeah, if she had come earlier, yes. that would have been I, I don't know what would have been the outcome, chance. but I think she had would have given us a better fighting chance for her. Uh -huh. Great, great. Okay, well, we need to take, a break, need to take a break. And so we take that break at 34 minutes past it. We'll be right back. What will it take to make this Christmas merry and bright? Families gathering once again. A feast with all your favorite delights. More giving and receiving financial security and peace of mind going into the new year? Well, with the support of your credit union, this Christmas can be the merriest and brightest yet because your credit union is sharing more love this Christmas. We are approving holiday loans helping you and your family to afford the little things that makes Christmas Christmas. And the big things too, of course. <laughs> Visit your nearest credit union to get approved for your holiday loan and to find out about our Christmas raffle where we are giving away tens of thousands of dollars in cash and prizes to our credit union family. And if you're not a part of the family, join a credit union today. Get in the Christmas spirit with your credit union. Credit unions, sharing more love this Christmas.
As one of the largest cable and internet providers in Belize, CBC strives to provide our customers with the highest standards of quality, value, and service in all aspects of cable TV and internet. Monitoring our systems closely, our technicians combine creative planning and state-of-the-art technology with years of experience and training to develop and provide the most reliable and advanced cable and internet service to exceed your expectations. For CBC and our team of talented engineers, technicians and customer service representatives, delivering less than the very best is never an option. Commercial Cleaning and Products of CTP, formerly known as Carpet Care Plus, offers a wide variety of professional restorative cleaning services and products in Belize. With over 20 years of experience in the industry, our mission has always been to provide our customers with the best products and services for quality, safe and environmentally friendly cleaning. What separates us from the rest? The services we offer. Fabric cleaning for all types of carpets, upholstery, walls and drapes. Vehicle detailing for both the interior and exterior. Total restorative cleaning of ceramic and porcelain tiles for floors, walls, marble, granite, limestone, travertine, clay and more. Degreasing and polishing of the entire kitchen and all its equipment. Also custom concrete designs. We are a supplier of the most cost-efficient and economically viable products when you buy our specialized super-concentrated formulas, such as cleaners, disinfectants, deodorizers, and sanitizers. Additionally, we also carry professional cleaning equipment, such as mops, buckets, vacuums, doormats, and window equipment, which are very durable and practical. You can order any of our products online at www.ccpbelize.com. CCP Belize uses only trained technicians, professional commercialized equipment, and EPA certified products. Our products are 100% biodegradable. We also have certified green products, which are used by Green Globe approved companies. Visit us at 68 North Front Street, Belize City, or contact us at telephone 223 1820. Email us info at ccpbelize.com. Good morning, Belize, and good morning. I say good morning, Belize, and good morning. And how are you this morning? Get up every morning, life go to a funky delight. Every morning, life go to a funky delight. Get up every morning, life go to a funky delight. Every morning, life go to a funky I got to tell big, big, big feet And one on the way You got to wipe that all way to me What a beautiful day Good morning, Billy And it's now 21 minutes to 9 o'clock Time certainly fly, Chief Exactly, yeah, I don't know where it goes, but it certainly flies I, yes, I just yes. I got up 4.30 this morning And it's already it's me and you. Almost 9 o'clock Yes, yes, and time, time certainly fly um, But I think we we're joined, of course, um, with um, Nurse Casilda Bowman, the manager of the Carlucha Memorial Hospital COVID unit, and Nurse Javier Grito as well, in, stu in studio with us. And then I think we have on Skype, um, Harrison Lachman Cuellar, mm -hmm. um, who is a survivor, uh, a COVID survivor, and so we want to talk a little bit about her experience as well. Good morning, Harrison. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm fine, Harrison. And you are doing good, I take it? I am grateful to be alive. You have no idea. Okay. Yes. I, just to give you a little highlight or a synopsis of what happened to me, I started having flu-like symptoms, so I immediately went for a rapid test, and that rapid test was inconclusive at first. Then I took a PCR test, and the PCR test came up negative. Mm. And the day after that, I woke up the morning, and my husband felt my neck and he's like, babe, you have hot, hot, hot fever. And I'm like, I tried to get up. PCR so was negative, you said? Yes. Sorry? The PCR was negative? Yes, my PCR was negative. Wow. I Go took ahead. it at one of the clinics. 
in uh -huh. the city. And when I tried to get up, I couldn't move. So I told him, I said, you know what? I'm feeling weak, weak, weak. Could you and mommy just please bathe me and take me directly to the hospital? Because at that moment, I couldn't move. Uh -huh. And when I arrived at the hospital, they did a test and immediately they confirmed that I did at that time have COVID. Uh -huh. And this is because I got my PCR test saying negative two days before. So at that point, a doctor came, saw me, a friend of mine, Dr. Gonzalez, and he said, Hyacin, you're very, very weak. You look dehydrated to me and I need to take you in right away. So. What they did, they started immediately on hydrotherapy replacement. Um, it's a it's a replacement with just fluids because they noticed that I was already dehydrated. So mm -hmm. they started that at an aggressive pace. And at this moment, I kind of literally can't remember a lot of things after that. So at that point, I know I was taken to the COVID ward. Um, there were many days I was unable to speak. There were many days I just opened my eyes barely and I just looked around. Mm -hmm. And during this time, the entire process being dehydrated, at this time, the COVID also messed up my kidneys. My kidneys mm -hmm. crashed. Wow. I, I had no idea, but at this point, the kidneys crashed totally. And there were blood tests that were done regularly. And this one day, a kidney specialist came and she told me, she's like, Mrs. Coyar, if this last blood test comes out bad like the others, I will have to put you on dialysis immediately. And all of this happened after I found out that I was COVID positive. Whoa. When the final blood test came back, she came back smiling and she's like, Mrs. Square, I have excellent news for you. And this is because every other blood test that came out were terrible, 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 terrible. Everything was too high. It was at levels it was not supposed to be. And she told me, Mrs. Cuellar, your blood went back just like nothing happened. And I looked at her and I closed my eyes, but I didn't close my eyes out of disrespect to her. Mm -hmm. I closed my eyes because I started praying. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, only you could have done that That's because every single test that day was bad, 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 until that very, very last test. And coming out, I asked my doctor, at what point was I serious? And he told me, Hyacinth, from the first day you came until seven days after, you were very, very serious. Wow. Plus, I am diabetic and hypertensive. So these these things wow. all bundled up together did not make it easy for me at all, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. Were well, you vaccinated, Hyacinth? Yes, I have both vaccinations. And I asked I ask a lot of questions afterwards. Um, I've also had a chance to speak to Dr. Manzanero, I speak to Dr. Gonzalez, and I have another doctor friend that I, I spoke to, and all three of them told me, had you not gotten both vaccines, they think it would have gone another way, and it would wow. not have been good. But uh -huh. this has been a very traumatic experience. It's something I woke up, when I woke up, because most of the times I was asleep, most of the times, and when I woke up and I lifted my gown, and I saw myself, I saw myself in pampers. That's the first thing that got to me. And then I looked on my left and I noticed there was a bug on my side and I realized I had a catheter inside. But these things really, really, wow. it gets to you, it really gets mm. to you. And during this time, all this time, I was unable to move my feet. I could not move my feet mm. any, any at all. So that was very traumatic for me. Looking at my feet, and not being able to move it. That really plays on your mind. Mm -hmm. Well, we have in studios Nurse Casilla Bowman and, and Nurse Javier Grito. I'm sure you, you're familiar, you're familiar with, with them. Good morning, Ms. Bowman. I good spoke morning. to Ms. Bowman after, and she she's an extremely good, wonderful leader. She has given me some tips, things I should do, things I shouldn't do, and I really appreciate her, really do, and your entire staff, Ms. Bowman, because your staff, the same love and care and treatment I got, every other person got that same love and treatment I got, and I really appreciate them all. Ha, have you identified maybe, or have an inkling of maybe where and how you, you were able to contract the, 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 the yes, uh, I do. COVID? I narrowed it down because I was extremely careful. I go to work, I come home. I did go somewhere before I went to work one day, and 
I believe, I don't want to name the business because I don't want any trouble, but I do know exactly where I got it from. Someone from the same establishment got sick the same time I did too, but that person did not go to the hospital. She, I believe, was serious as well, but she chose not to go to the hospital. I, the minute I realized I could move, I felt that was time to go to the hospital immediately. I would advise anybody, don't wait. The minute you feel, you feel a point where you can't move, you feel sick. In all my 46 years, that was the worst I've ever felt. So I knew immediately I needed to go to the hospital right away. How long ago since you, 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 um, you, you got um, infected? How long ago is this? When, when, when um, did you I get... I believe this would be almost two weeks now. Okay. Almost two weeks. Two, two, almost two weeks, yes. Because I'll tell you the truth. When you're in there, you lose track of time. Completely lose track of time. Mm -hmm. I came out. I didn't know if, if it was night or day. I go to sleep. Sometimes I wake up. It's midnight. And then I can't go back to sleep. Because you think it's daytime. And it totally, I had to get adjusted back. Mm -hmm. Good night, Andy. Wow. But you mentioned you had underlying <laughs> conditions, huh? Uh, yes, I am a diabetic and hypertensive. Okay, so that's where the vaccine the, the help, no? Help, no? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Um, so couple days coming home. Um, well, showing some footage of you uh, doing your therapy. Yes, I. Second day, I think I came home on Monday. Monday, I think I came home on Monday. I think I pronounced the name right. 
Um, her attendance, Miss Charlotte Arnold. I knew Miss Charlotte from I was a very little girl, and having her there was very comforting for me. Mr. Glenn Ford Brown, he used to come and move me from my right side to my left side, just so I was able to move daily. Um, Mr. Emerson Myers, these are all wonderful people. My friend, Dr. Gonzalez, that I could not have done this without you. Could not, could not, could not, and I thank him every single day because every day he checks on me. There was a father from, I believe, Divine Mercy. I have the rosary right here. He wrapped this rosary around my hand, and every day, every time he comes in his PPEs, he would come and he would tell me, Mrs. Square, you have to have faith because there are times you give up. You're hearing your kidneys crashing, you give up. Um, it's it's only it's only something that it plays with your mind and it did i won't even lie about it there were there were times i just said you know what i have to talk to my mom my husband and tell them okay do this do that because i just gave up at one time and nurse Diego was right there when she figured i gave up and she was right in my ears and she no 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 not giving up, give up. You're not giving up it's, and she knew my children by name and she remember she called their names and she's like you have to make it for these children i think you're going to do this you're going to make it mm -hmm. um being in there the strangest of place i made friends mm -hmm. um there was a gentleman mr norales and mr norales is an elderly one is an elderly man he's still he's still here on earth thank god and mr norales is the type that when i wake up Okay. and i'm in pain because because of the hydrotherapy replacement that i had to get because of the dehydration you're in pain when you wake up you're in pain terrible pain sometimes and he told when he sees that i'm in pain he gave the nurse right away you know like nurse nurse he make you know he he's that <laughs> voice that you didn't have he, he was a darling man when i tell you like we made friends there was a gentleman across from me when i woke up i saw him waving and he was sitting up and I'm like, who is this gentleman? And he told me, he said, my name is Alex, hi. And he said, hi, and I, I shake my head. All I could do at the time was shake my head. And when I was able to talk, we spoke about life. We spoke about children. Um, this, this, this part of the story really tears me up and literally brings me to tears because Alex told me, he said, he called me sis, uh -huh. and I was I was his sis, and he was my bro. That's how we referred to okay. each other. And I would ask my husband, Dave, please bring me a brother. Please bring one for me, brother. Please bring one for I, That's me. <laughs> and when Alex told me he's like, sis, he said, I love my wife. His wife was in there as well. And she too had COVID. And he told me, he said, I can't do this without my wife. I need my wife. And they have a son together and we spoke everything we told each other when we get out the families will meet he will meet his brother in law as he referred to my husband as his brother in law jason and okay. we, that was the type of friendship we built and one i don't know if it was morning or afternoon i woke up and i asked mr norales what was happening like what was happening and his reaction and me looking and afterwards i couldn't see and then afterwards, I was told that Alex passed. Right. Mm. Mm. That devastated me that sad, entire sad, sad. time for the rest of my time there because mm. I was his sis and he was yeah. my bro. And yeah. his wife, I was told, died minutes before and he died right after. But wow. these are stories that, these are things mm. that we go through. And I can tell you. From my own experience, the nurses and doctors went through the same thing I did. They cry for their patients. When their patients don't make it, they cry for them. Like, man, it was it was really it was hard. It was hard. Still is hard. I've accepted and I respect that he left with his wife because that's the love of his life. He told me that he said, She is the love of my life. I can't do this without her. And I'm like, bro, you have to do this. Everything he told me, he told me sis you've got to do this you've got to try and turn he gave me the encouragement and when he passed i looked over there and i like dude everything you told me and you left you know so mm -hmm. it was it was hard that was hard and still is hard i still 
feel it every single time I talk about him or his wife. Those are quick questions to, to, to maybe Nurse Casilda uh, and, and Javier as well. And she's talking about the, the, the trauma that you go through, the mental trauma, not, not only as a, as, as a patient, but, but you as a caregiver as mm -hmm. well. Um, the, their need for therapy, um, is there a structure for therapy for, for oh. you guys and as well maybe yeah, patients? Yeah, how do you deal with all of this? Maybe patients as well, because what she just pointed out is, is so traumatic real, as well, traumatic. you know, yes, yes. The, the kind of relationship that had developed. Um, definitely, yes, we are working on it. I think we're full speed ahead. Um, we're getting um, therapy for our nurses. Um, of course, I started with the nurses first because I need them to be well to take care and provide mm -hmm. um, care for patients, no? And I did, I also voiced to our, um, to my, to my, um, to Ms. Simmons, who does the psychotherapy that you know, um, we will have a lot of patients who will require help to unravel what has gone through because it's traumatic. Um, we try our best to shelter them from it, but they know it's hard. We try to, the only thing that we can do is to not have, let them have a visual um, just because we don't want to create more traumas, you know, um, and so... Yeah, it's hard, and like I said, we are getting help, and I'm glad we're getting help. Mm -hmm. um, and, and patients in there, technically, like like Harrison pointed out, are literally alone. Yes. Because of the contagiousness of the disease, it's not like so you are have your loved ones to you're able to have your loved ones or anything like nearby. that. Nearby, so you yes. become their, Definitely. their family in there, yeah. she pointed out, so there is that level of connection that you normally... Right, um, um, Javier, you, you make a connection with your patient, right? Definitely, because we know, we try, we try no, we actually, we feel them, we know that they are not with mm -hmm. the relatives, their kids, we think a lot of too. Mm -hmm. So when they are suffering and eventually, s w for example, what this particular patient goes through, then we think with what, what will happen with the kids and so so basically it's, it's devastating but mm -hmm. we try our best to treat our mental health to keep it healthy mm -hmm. with our assistant that we have we by myself i do some activities i go do my exercise but it's mentally it's it's hard it's hard because it's not oh. just it's not just what we are dealing in the hospital. Remember that outside we have a life, we have family, we have things to do outside too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean sometimes it gets so traumatic that I have, of course, you know, we have we build relationship with our patients, and um, like sometimes after a death, I I get couple calls with people crying, and they're not even saying anything; they're just crying, and then so we're all crying, and I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, what do I do? What do I say? We literally, I. Sometimes I don't say anything. I just allow every, them to cry and hope that it just gets better. Yeah. I like to find out for Hyacinth though, um, what is it like for her? Well, we see there's a, there's a sort of relaxation simply because there's a pressure that has built up for persons mm -hmm. being locked up and away from each other. What's your advice? She's back. Your advice going yes. forward and we'll have um, I also Hyacinth. comment as well on that. Yes, uh, we would like to hear how, what, how is she doing today. How yeah. are you doing today, Hyacinth? That was my question. That, you know, how are you feeling today? I'm not hearing though. I'm doing more things around the house for myself, which for just being able to bed yourself in the bathroom, um, making up your bed. I, these are things like my children, my mom or my husband would want to do, and I'm like, no, 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 let me try and do it. I want to do it. Like, you want to do things for yourself, but Speaking to a very good friend, Dr. Manzanero, he's like, the minute you feel tired, stop. So these are things that I'm, I keep in mind that the minute I get tired, I am supposed to stop. Um, one thing I want to say before we end is to give advice to people. Continue to be vigilant. Don't let your guards down because what I went through, I don't want none of you to go through having to be told that your kidneys is crashing because of you having COVID and you just being dehydrated, dehydrated to the point where you can't move your own feet and you have to learn to walk again completely. 
that is not a nice thing and I don't want nobody to go through that. The minute you feel like you have COVID, you feel sick, go to the hospital. I survived, I got excellent treatment while I was in there. Every single nurse, every single attendant, my Dr. Gonzalez, Nurse Molina, Nurse um, Sego, attendants, Arnold, Myers, Brown, every single body, every <laughs> Del Gallo, you guys really made me fight for my own life and gave me the strength to do so. You, you really, really helped me to live. I really appreciate that. And has uh, words of advice with regards to, you know, the vaccination campaign is still an active still up. Um, campaign. Uh, we have not reached that herd immunity yet. And so what would you say to those who are hesitant to, to, to From be every vaccinated? single doctor, my friend who is a doc, two friends who are doctors, other doctors that I spoke to, and from what I told them about my experience and what they know, because they, they spoke and um, they consulted each other as well, if I did not get my two vaccines, I would not be here talking to you any at all. Simply that. I would not be here talking to you. Mm -hmm. right. well, we are happy that you are here talking to us. Um, Thank you very much. Saying. And if you, if you will allow me, I want to say sure. thanks to everybody who prayed for me. My family, my in-laws, my husband's entire co-workers, all his staff that he works with. Thank you all for your love, support and care. I truly appreciate each and every one of you, and I thank you. Harrison, thank you so much, and thank you for speaking out as well. You know, You're more think, than welcome. I think it, it gives us a clear picture of what, um, yeah, no, that, of what we're dealing with. So thank you so much, Harrison. For, for not only the vaccine, uh, but following the, the protocols as well. Well, in, c in closing, um, Nurse Bowman, um, the Christmas is not, I know, sorry, unless there's any other pressing question, Chief. But well, she's saying that the figures are going down, the, uh -huh. the, the amount of people going to the hospital right now is, is but, going but down. But they don't want that to be but an indication to, be an to indication get reckless. They could relax and yes. they could become reckless yes, and, and, and so, so what's the... So, I mean, of course, the, the message never changes, all right? Mm -hmm. It's always, if you're not vaccinated, you have to get vaccinated. And if you're vaccinated and it's time for your booster, you need to get your booster as well. Um, the, the, the important when should you get your booster? Uh, what, what, what time frame from I say think the they're last saying time? they're saying within three to six months. Three to six months yes. after your last. Yes, or if you have been exposed, you can wait three months to start your vaccination. Vaccination. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, wash your hands. Try not to gather. I I mean, listen to me. We are social beings, and yes, we want it, but let's have many other Christmas than just this one Christmas. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I could remember having Zoom Christmas last year was well, not Christmas not Christmas. It was not the best, all right? But mm -hmm. this year, you know, we're getting closer, so we we want to make sure we keep ourselves prepared, keep ourselves safe, wear a mask, mm -hmm. get vaccinated, wash your hands, do not gather as much. All yeah. right? I don't know if Brito wants to want to add anything that the reminder is still the same. See, even with the new variant, the reminder is still the same. Wash your hand, keep your distance, wear your mask, get vaccinated. Does it seem as though the Delta versus the Alpha, um, it's more rapid in terms of the acceleration of illness? Yeah. Not, not uh, as well as being more contagious, right? Yes. Delta was more contagious than that. Wait, wait, Delta wreaked havoc on us. So while, while we are looking at Omicron now, um, regardless of what new, because remember, we're dealing with a virus, so we know there's going to be mutation, Mutations. we know there's going to be new variants, mm -hmm. and so, but the message don't change, regardless of what is happening, you need vaccination, that is going to be our way out, um, and, and if you recognize from statistics, the New England Journal actually published some statistics, and they're saying that the countries that has the least number percentage of vaccination and those are where you're seeing the rise in the variants are coming from of course um but it's it's something to understand that the the fox is there the vaccination works all right and uh, we are going to have continue having more variants and mu more mutation because remember when you're infected or when you're exposed with the covid it then mutates it mutates within you However, the mutation may mutate to not form anything or mm -hmm. may mutate to be stronger, better. It makes the um, binding capacity either really better or inhibit it from binding. Mm -hmm. And so all of that is happening. And we can't, st we can't really stop that. But we can stop it if we start to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. All right? 
it, it becomes less likely to be exposed with vaccination. I'm not saying that there's 100% um, a, a cure for it, but it will help us see the end I mean, of that, the that tunnel. That's the important message, uh, that vaccination is not a cure. Yes. Right? It, it is more of, of a preventative nature to assist yes. you. Yes. It doesn't mean that you won't contract COVID, but, you, but, but it will assist you, just like the testimony mm -hmm. that Hyacinth just gave, yes. that uh, well, she's not vaccinated. And I heard the same thing from Dr. Koyara yes. as well. We'll give you a you better know, chance. We'll people. give you a yes. better chance. Because yeah, remember, I, 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 I had COVID as well. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I was vaccinated as well, but I didn't have the, the, I, I didn't have the respiratory issues. I yes. was more congested and a slight fever, but I didn't go through the oxygen yeah. um, so reduction. Yeah, so remember what, what, we, what we want to do is to decrease hospitalization. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right? So Omicron can come and wreak havoc if it just comes to this, this flu and then it goes and that's it. Mm -hmm. Because everybody, a lot of people can be exposed, but if we have a but decrease in hospitalization, then that's okay. You don't have to die from it. Because in Africa yeah. right now, we're seeing a high, in, high rate mm -hmm. of hospitalization, but not severe cases, yeah. which is good. Mm -hmm. So, the, we'll, so we'll, get vaccination. What, get uh, vaccinated what, uh, what is see. important. Yeah. Well, we know, we, we know, Chief, that as Nurse Bowman mentioned, this is a period when people are agitating and clamoring to kind of get together. We're talking about opening the borders, and mm -hmm. these are all things that are going to be crescendoing together. So it's important that um, we, we heed the advice of our medical professionals. And uh, mm -hmm. because remember, when we get ill, we put pressure on the health system yes. that is already under-resourced, that is mm -hmm. al already Fine. underfunded, mm -hmm. and, and, and the, 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 the human toll that it takes, not only in debts, but the, um, the impact on the healthcare providers as well, because they have to go through this traumatic experience, as well as putting in this extra, more than likely extra w w significant work. Mm -hmm. um, that, and so it brings pressure on the whole system. So. I, I, I have issues with, with the fact that um, when you're vaccinated, you should be rewarded with parties and, yes. and exposing yourself. I don't agree with that. I, I see there's an ad running. I don't agree with that either. Um, yeah. For my own personal view, because yes. it is, it, it, this is not a full immunization. This is a control mechanism that Correct. the vaccine creates. So um, just think about all of that when you're thinking about getting together, especially persons who... Mm -hmm. You don't know what their vaccination status is. Mm -hmm. And so remember, we have we have Pfizer. We have one of the best vaccination well, we available. Have, we, we have the vaccine available, unlike man, many other jurisdictions. We have who different don't countries have it. fighting for it, no, and we, we have it available and not using it. And looking to spoil, looking to expire. Mm. Some of them, are, I'm sure, we're close to that time. Well, Chief. Well, let's, we gotta go unless we, we gotta go for the for the expires. All time, all time expires in the studio. Yes, in yes, the studio. yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So let's get some final um, remarks. Uh, certainly, we want to thank um, Aaron. But, but let's give North Xavier Green. Okay, I thought they, 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 they did. Before, before we go, man, I thought they did. Well, we no matter, no matter any, no matter how many variants we have, the the standards precaution. For us to be safe is still the same, wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your distance, no gathering, get vaccine. Still always, if there is, if, if there is any change of variant, it doesn't matter, just continue using the tools that we have so we could have a better future for us okay. on this fight. I, I just want to say one thing. So I mean, we have we have a lot of focus on nurses but i just it was just today this morning i was thinking i was like man my epidemiologist has not had a break from covid started she works sunday to sunday uh, oh. so i have to big up dr bermudez she is excellent okay. she's always ready on demand to if i ask her for statistics she's able to hurry give it to me but i mean we have a lot of people who are really doing some excellent jobs and you know well, she's probably a good attirant, you know, so. yes <laughs> yes she is <laughs> so, so, so let, let me big up dr barbudas indeed yes. <laughs> all the best to you yes uh, indeed and, and we uh, know that it, it takes it takes a whole cadre of individual and mm -hmm. resources to be able to continue to maintain um, yeah. the whole level Correct. of contagion and, and deaths as well. Yeah. Well, Chief, I think we've covered quite a bit this morning. Yes, we have. You know, we went from our Auditor General to our COVID unit manager mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all the 
the surroundings in reference to the COVID that has seemed as though it's going to be with us for a while. For sure. And so we have to get adjusted and, mm. and understand that the virus move when we move. And so the idea is to limit our movement and the le limit our interaction. And of course, follow all the protocols. I think we know them by heart. Uh, you know, who don't, don't know it by now is because it must be under some rock somewhere. <laughs> um, I want to say very quickly to Erin, thanking her for being um, with us this morning on Love mm -hmm. FM. Certainly want to thank um, William Usher, our master control operator. Um, also want to thank um, Andrew Jones for streaming and our producer, Manuela Ayuso, chief, and certainly all our viewers and listeners throughout the length and breadth of this country as well as those in the diaspora as well. We want to thank you for joining us this morning. And we urge you to come back again tomorrow where we will we'll do this all over again just for you. Okay, I will end with a thought from Henry Ford. You know, Henry Ford, uh, mm -hmm. Model T Ford, the man on the Ford vehicle. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, name after him. Uh, he invented <laughs> those. <laughs> <laughs> he was the, Ford, the uh, owner of the Ford, Ford Company. The daddy of the Ford Company, daddy Henry of Ford. Um, he said, um, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. That's one of my favorite quotes, mm -hmm. you know. Whether you think you, you can or you think you can't, you are right. In other words, you think you could do it, you're right. You think you can't do it, you're right. Definitely. Because that's what you tell yourself. Yes. Right? Definitely. I can't do that. And the minute you say you can't do that, you're right. You can't do it for true because mentally you've already told yourself mm -hmm. you can't, can't do it. Yes. So the recovery process, again, from COVID is to tell yourself I can. Now, that yes. doesn't guarantee, but at least it's better than saying I can't. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Um, so whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So I can't walk. So, you know, I could walk and I will walk, you know? Definitely. And so... You are right at all times. It's all in the mind. Because your life is controlled by your thoughts. That's how you go. Mm -hmm. Right? Your life controlled by your thoughts and so on. Yes. Um, well, try, you know, what we usually say. We usually say, keep your thoughts surrounded by love. Exactly. You know, keep exactly. loving your thoughts at all times. Love for yourself, <laughs> love for your fellow human beings. Absolutely. Love for your country. Love for anything because it's the most powerful thing in love. the world. So choose love. And once you have chosen love, we say to you, Belize and, and beyond. beyond, thanks for, for choosing, choosing love. love. Have a great day. Good Bye -bye. morning, Belize, and good morning. I say good morning, Belize, and good morning. And how are you this morning? Get up every morning, like go to a family. Good morning, 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 good morning